My brain is eating itself and so is yours and that is a weird sciencey fact that boggles my mind. Like an overdone horror theme, our brains are hungry for brains. But the only one available for it to eat is itself. Some cells can do something called phagocytosis, that's not a slur, don't cancel me. This is the process by which the plasma of a cell membrane engulfs a particle or another cell, essentially eating it. This is how our immune system works, this is what white blood cells do. They go and they eat the stuff that's in our system that shouldn't be in our system and neutralize it. And then, you know, flush it out. Basically a biological game of Pac-Man, you know, eat the ghost before they kill you. So this process happens in our brain as well, but obviously that's not eating our brain, that's eating stuff that's not supposed to be in our brain. But our brain is like a computer and a central processing center. It controls all of our functions and all of our processing. And that requires a lot of energy. A third of our total energy intake just goes to making our brain run. Some people, maybe a little more than others, you know, there's definitely certain subsets of the population that are running on power saver mode. But all that energy consumption creates a lot of waste. After all, the brain's really just burning sugar, but when you burn something, it doesn't completely disappear, it just changes physical form, and we still need to get rid of it, and phagocytosis is the process of doing that as well. Cells come in, eat the waste, get it out of your headspace. In fact, it's one of the theories as to why we sleep. It's just, you know, time to clean up shop. But that's not really eating your brain, that's just eating your brain's excrement to get it out, something that some people's brains apparently do better than others. That was a shit for brains joke if you didn't get it. Sorry guys, still a little sick, still getting B or C game from me. But your brain is kind of like a dating profile, it's just there to form connections. Every time you learn something new, make a new memory, develop a new habit or a new skill, the brain is forming literal physical neural connections. And just like all those connections you formed on those dating profiles, a lot of them turned out to be, you know, unwanted or undesirable. When your brain decides it no longer needs some of those connections, it goes a little Hannibal and, you know, eats them. And that is quite literally the brain eating itself. This happens a ton in the transitional period between adolescence and adulthood. Obviously you're learning a lot of new things in that period, you gotta unlearn a lot of old things. Certain things that your brain needs to focus on for development become irrelevant and is just taking up space. And your brain goes through a process called pruning which gets rid of a lot of those old connections. For a very long time we thought that that was really the only time that the brain really ate itself and the adult brain structure was permanent. Turns out that's not the case and the adult brain is a lot more flexible than we thought it was. But but to maintain that type of flexibility, that means your brain is constantly eating itself your entire life. It's actually a good thing. It means old dogs can learn new tricks. Isn't that right, girl? Mm -hmm. And the fact that your brain bites out bits of bad bonds to bring about blank space because it can build back better, well, that is pretty mind-boggling.